<laughs> Henry? Coach, what's it take to win a game like that? It takes really good players um, who have a, a resolve about them that they've shown all year long. Uh, I can honestly tell you we have not gotten into a timeout at UTEP, at New Mexico State, here, McNeese, where there's ever been a, a bit of panic on their part. And that's, I mean, in my time of coaching, that's incredibly unusual. Usually it's like, guys, it's okay, we can still win this, whatever. But these guys just have a, a very, um, they're just confident. And uh, I think it was just enough, obviously, to, to get the win tonight. What a catalyst for something ahead. Man, that's what everybody asks me all the time. I don't know. You just never know. You're only as good as your next game. And uh, it's great to get a win. You get to get great to get one and zero in conference. But now we got to go to Wyoming, and we got to we got to we got to play well there. Otherwise, it kind of ruins you know what happened tonight. So hopefully, we just kind of keep. Banging these out one by one, and then we'll see where it leads us. So I was going to say, you talked to me about Eden Green Bay, uh, McNeese, battling out wins like this. This is what's going to happen. I mean, is this paying dividends? I mean, this is just yeah, I mean, I think I said after that McNeese game, I think it was McNeese, maybe we know where you need games like that. And, and we've had a plenty of them. Um, we're, at, we're at 10 games played already. They're only at seven. And we've, I mean, we're battle to. I feel like it's the middle of February right now. So. Uh, we got to keep getting our guys rest. I just told them this is another tough stretch. It's three games in seven days. We got an afternoon game Saturday, which is a real quick turnaround, and we just got to bang through that one. And then finally, I think there's a little daylight for us to hopefully feel like it's December again as opposed to February. I know you guys have used, you've talked about a lot. You know, these are guys that are new with one another. Um, maybe that was good over the first nine games or so. I don't know how long you, you still think that this team is going to be new. Yeah. But that was a, a veteran team of a bunch of seniors. Does that say something about how, how this team maybe is, has come together and, and maybe they're not still learning one another? I, I think offensively for sure. I think defensively, especially at the beginning of the game, I, I was going into the Auburn game, I was really concerned about the time off that Auburn had and what we had just been through. And going into this game, I felt the same way. They've been off a lot longer than us. They've been prepping. They're ready to go. We're playing a game. We're turning around playing another game. And I thought Boise State came out with a ton of pop and a ton of energy. And they, sh they looked like it was only their seventh game of the year. And it looked like it was our tenth game of the year. But I thought, fortunately, over the course of it, like you're saying, I think our guys are just, they have a confidence about them. We've won some big games. Um, and I think eventually we just felt like we would win the game somehow, some way. I felt that way, I guess, anyways. Coach, all these uh, grinded out games here early in the season, and you know, you're saying we're just getting into December. Is that something you're concerned about? I don't know. Um, you know, today was the first day I used the word load management um, with one of my players. And um, I'll be honest with you, I mean, Monday, um, gosh, I think Jeff might have tried to come to practice Monday. We didn't even practice Monday. We just watched a lot of film and just trying to get these guys through this right now because it's a really tough stretch athletically which all we see but it's also a really tough stretch academically right now there's finals there's papers there's exams there's all these things going on and it's just made it a big crunch for us and i'm just trying to kind of get us through we had some guys in hotels last night because they've got flus and different things and we're just trying to i just told them that we got one more saturday to just find a way to stay connected and fight through and then hopefully like i said earlier there'll be a little daylight for us Last week you were talking about your team trying to push opponents to take more threes. Yeah. But you also said you were willing to change your strategy. What came into getting ready for today, um, especially because Boise is a team that can obviously shoot at um, 50%? Yeah, um, you know, their numbers are so low. You know, we kind of went into the game worried about their three-point shooting, but they just have not shot the ball very well at all. Jessup, obviously, is a key component to them, but his, his numbers were so bad coming in, you're kind of guarding them as if what he can do, uh, potentially, but you're also looking at the numbers. And when he got going, he got going. And uh, we tried to stop him. Um, got to go back and watch some clips. I thought we were much more attentive as the game went on. Dickinson, I mean, came out of nowhere and was exceptional. I mean, that's not really in his skill set. And we had to adjust to a, a little bit to him as well. They missed one when it counted. That's all I know. Um, and that ended up kind of hopefully sealing the deal for us. And uh, we, again, it's, it's part of our philosophy. Um, there's games like this are going to happen where we're all sitting there going, should we be changing something we do right now? But at the end of the day, I know Carlton had those two at the, at the beginning of the half. One was on a charge. We, if we can keep him out of foul trouble, keep our guys out of foul trouble, win the war on the boards, keep teams off the free throw line, we're going insane. Like, if you're going to beat us, that's how you're going to beat us. 
I mean, I can't think of a better shot of someone trying to beat us than making 14 threes, and we were still able to win. So, not pretty, but uh, got the job done. With Bob, with that, um, they had the ball with 29 seconds remaining, and they were shooting at 50% uh, from beyond the arc. Yeah. What was going through your head? Uh, I mean, they're, they're, I told the guys, they're probably going to get a shot up. We could not foul. That was the number one thing. We cannot get dragged into any kind of a foul in that situation. They're probably going to get one off. Don't foul them and make it contested. Uh, you, the last thing I would want is someone trying to go for a steal or make a play and you give up an easy lob to the rim. We subbed in Corey to get some size on the ball and just kind of played it out the rest of the way. CB and RJ Williams, when they got in that, that dust yeah. up, I mean, it could have changed the game. But they're just talking about the process. Like, what was the explanation given to you? Yeah, um, I think they're both pretty fiery guys. Um, and RJ's a, a, a center who's 6'5", banging with guys down there. He's got a lot of energy and enthusiasm to his game. He played that way. He flops, with, and he got some on CB. And I think he got in his, his ear in his head a little bit. And when you hear that, you obviously want to go back. And I think the two of them were kind of going at it a little bit. They got popped for the double. Um, and then I think Carlton walked away, and he kind of kept going at him, and, and they got him for the next one. That's my understanding. Obviously, you guys are inside out, but only three made three pointers. I mean, you, you yeah. look at a kind of, I mean, are you, you want to obviously do better than that? Or? You know, honestly, we, we don't talk about threes much. We just don't. We want to get the ball to the paint. We, we I thought they really let us play tonight, um, which was advantage Boise. We need those foul calls around the rim, and we didn't get a ton of them. Um, but I thought down the stretch, we finally got a whistle, we finally got to the free throw line, and that kind of helped balance everything out for us. Coach, what kind of play did you defend for at the end of the game? You know, either a lob, which they tried to run on the previous play, which is something we were a little bit worried about, and if you take away the lob, obviously they're just trying to get a quick shot up. So like we were saying in the timeout, just don't foul, just don't foul. You know, it's, it's, a, tough, it's a tough shot to make with that kind of timeout. Were you looking at Jensen? Potentially, it could have come to him for sure. But I think, again, we're trying to take away the law, and we didn't have a if it got to Jessup, which it did, we challenged him. Paul, we're seven minutes in now, and you haven't been asked a question yet about guy goes 31-6 and six tonight yep. in a two-point conference win. Um, Jaquan, and you mentioned load management. First of all, is he the guy you're talking about with a little load management? He's coming off a keep that confidential. Well, he's coming off an Achilles yeah, injury, no and he question. played 39 minutes tonight. Now, he had the numbers, but yeah. are you worried um, about his, his minutes at this point and – the, the game he had, you guys don't win without him tonight. Yeah, no. Um, like I said, Monday we didn't practice. Um, him, Carlton, JJ, they had the day. They played a lot of minutes the day before. Um, this is a really tough stretch for us. Quan this morning um, was feeling it a little bit. We talked about potentially load management, mostly in jest. Um, he did something a little bit different today. Felt good in warm-ups. We said we'd go with it. Uh, what that means long term, I don't know. This is just a tough stretch for us, and we got one more. And I think when we get through that, we're on a much more traditional schedule the rest of the way. It's just, I guess, it's bad scheduling on my part. There's just been a lot of games here, and I think well, that's true. And aside then from the load management part of it, tonight he a yeah. lot of what you set up for him and a lot of what was going on yeah. was was Jessup trying to defend him at the top of the key, and yeah. obviously he has a whole lot of options to to drive and do whatever. I would imagine that's a matchup you 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 guys would take. Again, if you get, yeah. when you play Boise again, you would take Jessup trying to defend Jaquan, I would you know, think, most of the time. Offensively, I, the, the only other player I've, I've coached that was that fun to coach offensively was R.J. Barrett. He's a, a, an incredibly fun player to coach because he can do anything from anywhere. He can play in the post. He can play mid-post elbow. He's got a perimeter game. He can use ball screens. He can play isolation one-on-one. And we just move him around in the different ways based on who's guarding him and what skill we can take advantage of at the time. There's times you've seen him, he plays in the post all night and scores. There's times you see him, he's on the perimeter playing one-on-one -on -one using ball screens. He's just a really fun guy to kind of move around the chessboard a little bit. And, uh, and he's terrific. And, and he was again tonight. He's helped us win a lot of games. And uh, he's a great Lobo basketball player. I know he's only had this one year, and a lot of great players have to put year over year over year. But um, I think he's going to be, be one of the greats here. There's one last question, and then we can take one on this weekend. Uh, Coach, can you talk about how it looked like Boise State was playing off of J JJ? Yep. Uh, is that something that you can look to take advantage of, of back cuts? And yeah, and, and JJ's pretty good at it. Um, you know, it, it's been hitting this all year. Some teams have kind of laid off him, some teams hadn't. He'd made a three in each of his last two games. 
which I was hoping was going to kind of keep defenses honest. But they play off him. But he's really good at cutting. He's really good at moving without the ball. He just has to continue to do that. And then, quite frankly, we, we just need more games together where we can all get a feel for each other. And I think tonight you can start to see, like, McQuatch's strengths driving. You know, like, everyone's got their strengths and just hopefully playing off each other a little bit. And that includes JJ, you know, obviously playing as a, as a non-shooter and doing some different things. Last one on Wyoming. Still got a lot of on just on matchup. On Wyoming. Oh, yeah. Matchup, I know you still got a bunch of time to look at it, but uh, just initial thoughts on the matchup. You know, my, my biggest concern with Wyoming is just our tight turnaround. They're at home tonight. Uh, they're going to be at home again this afternoon. We obviously play tonight. we got to travel. It's an afternoon game. It's three games in seven days. Like I said, tonight, I thought Boise had more burst than us, especially at the start of the game. And we've just got to find a way to rally our energy to get through one last game for this stretch and then hopefully kick back for a couple of days and, and get some rest. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Jaquan Lyle tied his career high 31 points tonight. Questions for Jaquan? Jaquan, do you, you had a matchup most of the night where it looked like you guys were just sending everybody down baseline and it was you one-on-one -on -one with Jessup at the top. Um, that matchup, I I think you probably enjoyed. Did, did you like that matchup? Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, the co my coaches, teammates, they built a lot of confidence in myself to, you know what I'm saying, they put the ball in my hands and trust me to make the right plays. And, you know what I'm saying, every time I step on the court uh, and whoever's in front of me, I don't think they can guard me. So. Just whatever that means is making the right basketball play, and hopefully I can do that. Is this uh, what you dreamed about during your long rehab? Man, man, yes, 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 yes. I just prayed on and prayed on over, over and over again that you know what I'm saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss a beat whenever I came back, and God has answered those prayers, and my teammates has helped me throughout the whole time, and trainers, coaching staff, you know what I'm saying, and got my body ready, you know what I'm saying for this, for this season, and I couldn't be more happy with the start of it. Last game, you spend the halftime warm-up working a free throw. Today, they really came in handy. How much have you been working on them, and how much have you been thinking about it? Uh, I mean, not really. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know what, I don't know what was going on like last game in the first half while well, I missed like all those free throws in the first half like that. But I mean, it's frustrating. I think I, I got in my head a little bit, and I think um, it was just on myself that I was missing those. But you know, what I'm saying once I just calmed down and you know, what I'm saying took my time and. Uh, knock them down. I missed a couple tonight. Missed a friendly number one and one. So you just got to keep getting better. Uh, Jacobon, you, you have both knees shrink wrapped in ice. And there's times where you're walking and it looks like, I don't know if it's your saunter or if it's just you're walking like an old man. But how do you feel physically? How are you holding up? Man, I, feel, I, feel, I feel good, man. I mean, as you can say, I'll be on the ground a lot when I'll be trying to drive to the hole and stuff. I'll be falling all over the place. I'll be having little aches and pains hips and knees and stuff. So, but, I mean, for the most part, I feel good. Uh, when it's go time, I'll be ready, you know what I'm saying? But when the ball's dead, I may be limping a little bit. But, you know what I'm saying, just just, just staying ready. So I'm, you just staying ready. Three wins over three pretty good teams. Wisconsin, Montana, tonight. What does it do for you guys going on the road to Wyoming? How do you feel about yourselves? Uh, I mean, I mean, we should feel, we should feel pretty three, uh, pretty good. I mean, like you said, those are three, three pretty good ball teams. Uh, but we never can get too high, never can get too low. Just got to stay balanced and, you know, stay, stay focused, stay locked in, and uh, get, stay, on the, stay on the right course to get better. So, yeah, you put up great numbers, and obviously you said that you feel like a leader on this team. But when you go out there, do you feel like the scoring comes organically? Are you kind of forcing it? I mean, it just seems like, from my perspective, that you're just throwing it up. How are you? And it's just going in. How are you feeling out there, man? Uh... I mean, any any shot that you see me shoot, uh, like it's not nothing I don't work on. Like, I get here two hours before the game, and I shoot. I try to shoot every shot that I'm shooting in the games and my workouts. I try, like I don't ever try to. I don't ever shoot shots that that I don't work on. You know, so it's not it's not like you know. I'm not saying it's not like it's forced, but I just trust myself and my teammates trust in me to make those shots, and I got confidence in myself to do so. You guys had 19 assists, six turnovers. That's not a number you guys have had very often this year, at least on the turnover side. So what were – Boise, the matchup, I know they're not pressure defense, but six turnovers is your guys' season low. So I'm just curious if you guys have, have been talking about turnovers or is that something you guys try not to talk about to not get in your head? Um, I got to give all that credit to JJ. Uh, I think early on he was kind of taking, like, the back seat and letting me handle the ball a lot. And 
I was throwing the ball to the other team a lot. But now, you know what I'm saying, like these past couple of games were probably about ever since about UTEP, he's just been taking over the ball a lot and you know what I'm saying? And he he, he, he keeps he keeps us all balanced and you know what I'm saying, he never looks rattled and you know what I'm saying, he always had the ball in his hand a lot, so I just so, cool. Like even when he's not scoring, he's I mean he, Yeah, he, like yeah, JJ JJ he, he keeps all of us balanced. He gets everybody involved equally, you know what I'm saying, and he he he, he does a great job at it. Thank you. Thanks, man. Third go round, um, going through Mountain West play, you know, as a junior. So I'm curious. A lot of your teammates had no idea what to expect with with you know Boise State coming in here. Did you talk to them at all about Boise State being a better team than they showed last year? Or? Yeah, I did. Um, you know, Jessup and Austin, they're pretty good, and they gave them trouble last year when they came in here. So I told them like. Um, you just got to take every game like serious and never underestimate anybody and you know we kind of like when they came in and they ate on like you know first start and we kind of woke up like oh like, you know these guys are pretty serious and we picked up from that. And again drawing back from last year or even two years ago you, you've been through this before down the stretch of a game like that where you're you know it's going back and forth you're, there were you know, 17 lead changes in the final minutes you guys are in timeouts how different if at all was it this year when you guys are in a one possession game down in the final minute as opposed to maybe last year or the year before? I mean, you know, we're pretty confident in those moments. It's like especially defense. Um, we knew we just had to get the stop. Um, and we're pretty good at that. We just had to go out there and get one stop. And we got a mature like team. Like we got all the guys and we understand we just what needs to be done to get a win. Early in the game, you know, Boise's up eight nothing. What were you trying to do to just, you know, keep the guys calm and just try to get yourself uh, back in it? I don't know, I just I wasn't trying to like say, you know, give me the ball, let me go. I just started opening uh, the first couple of layups and, you know, just time to put it down and play a game. You told me your goal was to be one of the best defenders in the Mountain West. How do you feel that's going so far? Up and down, but um, still work in progress. Uh, I try to come in every day and work and try to lead by example because I've been the only one who's been here with Paul. Like, he played. So I just try to set an example and, you know, play my game. Following that up on, on the defensive side, you guys do run a kind of high-risk defense where you guys are giving some space on the perimeter. By design, it's to keep the foul trouble, I know, out of the bigs. How many of those shots tonight, though, do you guys think, or do you think, you know, you guys still need to get a lot better at closing out, or, or I don't know if it's the rotation. How many of those threes that they hit tonight could you guys have done better on? A lot. Um, some of them we didn't really contest. Like, it was soft, even though we contested it. Um, but we had to um, run off, especially Jessup, he's a really good three-point shooter. He's been struggling, but uh, every time he comes in the pit, he try and get it going. Um, so I thought a couple of threes, we could have done a better job closing it and forcing him to drive. Speaking of Jessup, you, uh, you guys seem to uh, hold him in check a lot more in the second half. What, what kind of adjustments did you guys make on that? I mean, in the first half, we kind of just, you know, like I said, we were soft, like closing out and stuff like that. So in the second half, um, we just try to make everything difficult, like catches and stuff like that, and make him drive to, and then make the season of that. Um, in the first half, we were kind of like, he had open loose where we were pretty soft, and he just got it, uh, each shot of it. He was pretty hot. Uh, you, you individually were uh, coming out on him a lot more. Uh, what, describe what it was like trying to cover the guy when he's... Uh, I mean, he's pretty difficult. Um, you know, I just had to like force him to spots where he's not comfortable, and you know, I mean, it doesn't mean he's not gonna score, but just try to make everything difficult a little bit, and try and force him to, you know, where he's gonna have to make a shot of the CB and, and walk, and that was it. So kind of piggybacking off what Jeff initially said, um, close games. Coach Murray said that he's seen a difference in this team. Do you, as a player, see a difference in your team closing out games? As yeah, for sure. I mean, last year, I mean. Some of the games we lost last year, we like go close games and we couldn't close them out. But this year, we have a way um, older team, we're mature, and we have guys that played a lot of basketball. So it, you know, we know what needs to be done. Were you at the? Uh, were you on the floor at the end? How tough did you have to be to win this game? Um, we had to be like just you know a whole lot ground. Um, we knew Jessup was gonna get a touch and Austin, so we just had to try to make it difficult on those guys and. Whatever shot they take, we just try and contest it and deliver the results. Thank you.